I'm a great believer we need to look forward and to think about what we can achieve. Instead of actually trying to recreate the past, we should be thinking about how do we save biodiversity and how do we create functional systems? The world is changing rapidly. We're seeing climate change and massive anthropogenic change. So we cannot go backwards. We have to think about what we can do to save species and rebuild their systems. I work for an organization called the Durrell Wildlife Conservation Trust. It was founded by Gerald Durrell, the writer and naturalist, and he believed passionately that we can save endangered species. We can save them by captive breeding and we can reintroduce them back into the wild. And he set up a zoo in Jersey dedicated to the conservation of critically endangered species. Jerry was always fascinated by the dodo. He felt it was a species that should never have become extinct. And with captive breeding and some of the conservation techniques that we have, it should have been saved. However, we've lost the dodo and he felt it was a very poignant example of what we should be working to try and avoid. Jerry was also interested in the dodo's home, the island of Mauritius. We all think of Mauritius as a beautiful holiday paradise, but actually it's been radically altered by human beings. And if we look at this first image ever of Mauritius, this is a woodcut that was done in 1602. And we can see people are setting up a settlement, but they're also destroying nature. And this image is quite poignant because you can see on the right hand side, the first ever image of a dodo and it's walking off the page into extinction. It is no surprising that the dodo has disappeared forever because the island home of Mauritius has been largely destroyed. The forest has gone. And we can see from these maps that the forest cover, which is represented in black, has almost completely disappeared. And today we only have 1% of native forest left. So it is no surprise that we have lost many species beside the dodo. And if we look at this image, we can see these reconstructions of some of these lost species. And if we go round the page, we can see in the top left-hand corner, a beautiful flightless rail. Then we have a browsing tortoise, a fruit pigeon, a fruit bat, a large parrot and a giant skink. We must lament the loss of these wonderful creatures. But also remember, we've also lost their ecological functions. The roles they played in the environment as predators, seed dispersers, and as pollinators and as omnivores. And when we think about restoring systems, we must also think about how those species actually function in those systems and the role that those species play. And although Mauritius has lost a large number of species, it still has some wonderful wildlife left. And this image shows some of the species that I've been preoccupied with for the last four decades. When I went to Mauritius in my early 20s, I was very self-obsessed biologist and I felt I could make a real difference. I went to Mauritius to run a captive breeding program, to work on some very rare species, to try and breed them and save them from extinction. And the first species that I really got involved with was the Mauritius kestrel. It was in the 1970s the world's rarest bird. And when I went to Mauritius I was given the brief that I was to work there for a year or two, but I was to hand the project over to local biologists. And of course, at the time, there were very few resources available for conserving these endangered species. And the Mauritian biologists didn't have the knowledge 
or the background to save the Mauritius kestrel. So essentially, Western conservation organizations were dooming the Mauritius kestrel to oblivion. I was sent to Mauritius for two years and essentially I was sent there to close the project down. When I mention this today to my peers and my conservation friends, they doubt that that was ever the case, but I can assure you that in the late 1970s, there was a philosophy that we should leave the rarest species become extinct and use the resources to save some of those species that are more likely to survive. This was triage, but triage at its worst. However, I have to tell you that I didn't stay on Mauritius for one or two years. I stayed there for 20 years working on the critically endangered species, and I'm still involved today, four decades later. And we were able to save the Mauritius kestrel. We were able to set up a captive breeding and reintroduction project. And over a period of a decade, we reintroduced 333 birds into the wild. And we learned how to look after them in nature by providing nest boxes and in some cases by to, to feed them and to control predators. And the population today is doing relatively well. We have one population of 50 pairs that breed every year and do exceedingly well and another population in the Black River Gorges. In all, we have 300 to 350 birds. Not as good as we'd like, but certainly better than extinction. And the work on the kestrel encouraged us to work on other species, such as the pink pigeon. The pink pigeon had declined as a result of cyclones and habitat destruction. So that by 1990, we only had nine or 10 individuals left in the wild. And we know that for certain because they all had rings on. And it seemed quite likely that the species would become extinct by around the year 2000, 2001. So we had to do something about it. And as in the case of the Kestrel, we set up a captive breeding project. We were very successful in breeding them and we were able to reintroduce them to the wild. We have now set up seven subpopulations that are well established. And we've also set up two other recent populations which seem to be doing reasonably well. And today we have 500 free living birds. However, like the Kestrel, they're gonna need some long-term care and management. So we feed the birds and we do control predators, but at least we still have them. And there is some hope for the future as we restore the species and its habitat. The work on the pigeon gave us the confidence to work on the Mauritius parakeet or the echo parakeet, which was in the late 1980s, the world's rarest parrot. We only had eight to 12 individuals left in nature. And it seemed likely that it was soon to become extinct since only two or three pairs were trying to breed annually. We worked intensively guarding wild nests and nurturing the wild population. And we found that many of the pairs weren't breeding very well. So we rescued eggs and chicks and brought them into captivity and use those to start a captive breeding program. Over a number of years, we were able to rear young in captivity and release 139 back into the wild and to look after those birds by providing them with nest boxes and supplemental food. And today, the echo parakeet is flourishing. We have a population in the region of about 750 birds and we set up an additional population and we can look after that species into the future. And what's more, by working with the echo parakeet, we've developed techniques that can be applied to other species of parrots. So this intensive work is giving us the answer to endangered bird management worldwide. 
If you look at what we've done, it seems we've done captive breeding and reintroduction, but we've also been identifying the causes of decline and limitation in the wild and correcting those with management. So when there have been food shortages, we've been feeding the wild birds. When there've been problems with predators, we've been controlling predators, controlling cats and rats, which is such a problem on oceanic islands. We've also been looking at disease issues and trying to learn how to control parasitic diseases at nest sites and around feeding stations. But most of all, we've been using this work to try and correct some of the problems that the species is facing in terms of habitat destruction and habitat degradation. We have been rebuilding the Mauritian ecosystem. We start off by helping the birds, such as the echo parakeet, providing them with food and nest sites, but hopefully also by rebuilding their habitats, planting forests and restoring the native forest, which has become so degraded. So if you look at the progress and the restoration of the three species, you can see that they've all shown positive population growth. But you will also see that this work that started in the 1970s didn't really start to take off for a decade or sometimes two decades after the start of our conservation work. And there's a very important lesson there that species are savable, but sometimes it can take a long while. I don't think that the conservation of many species is particularly difficult, but it does require long-term investment of time and resources. And this is something that we should think, be thinking about. Restoring species takes time, but restoring species helps drive the restoration of other species and their ecosystems. I've talked about three species, the kestrel, the pigeon and the parrot. But we've also saved a whole host of other critically endangered species. There are five species of birds that at the lowest had known populations of a dozen or less. And on Mauritius and on the sister island of Rodrigues, we have saved from almost certain extinction, nine species of vertebrates, five birds, three reptiles and a fruit bat. And it shows the great potency of species conservation. Work on one species can help drive work on another species. But what's more important is that species work also drives the restoration of whole ecosystems. And our, work on and our work on reptiles has helped drive the restoration of small offshore islands around Mauritius. And this is Round Island. Round Island is about a square kilometre. And unfortunately, when we started working on it, it looked like a moonscape. The vegetation had become degraded. The island was losing all its vegetation and the reptiles and seabirds and invertebrates that lived there were all at perilously low levels. The island had become degraded by the introduction of rabbits and goats. These are exotic mammals that don't belong there. And these were removed in the 1970s and 80s by teams of conservation biologists, including this team of New Zealanders. If you ever want to get rid of invasive mammals off an island, you hire New Zealanders. They are natural hunters and wonderful conservationists. And this group of three New Zealanders that you can see there in the bottom left are the ones that restored Round Island. And the person at the extreme left is Don Merton, who in his day 
saved more endangered birds than anybody else on this planet. And on the right, you'll see a picture of me as a young man. I like showing pictures of myself in the field when I was a lot younger, mainly because I'm vain. And it also shows me holding a rabbit. This is one of the rabbits that we eradicated off Round Island. And I always say that when you work with species, you've got to know your species, but you've also got to know your enemy. After we got rid of rabbits and goats, we started to restore Round Island. We set up a field station and started to put back some of the missing plants. And we were able to put back most of the species that we felt belonged there. Unfortunately, because the island had got so degraded, there wasn't a seed bank left in what little soil was left. So we had to take plants across. And soon we saw the island regenerating. The plants started to come back. We saw hardwoods growing and we saw the palm savanna flourishing. However, regrettably, a number of plants, a number of small herbaceous plants, which had been very, very rare during the era when there were rabbits and goats, but had managed to survive, these started to decline when we started to restore the vegetation. And it seemed clear that one of the problems was that they were part of a grazing climax community. They were found in open areas on Mauritius and these open areas had been kept as such by grazing tortoises that were now extinct. It seemed clear that these herbaceous plants and grasses that were such an important part of the Round Island vegetation community would soon become extinct, outshaded and outcompeted by the other plants that were growing and basically pushing out these small little herbaceous plants. We needed to return a grazer to the island. But how can you actually return an extinct form? So we felt it was important to try and find an ecological replacement, to try and find a tortoise that would be a grazer and trampler, a browser and a seed disperser. And we felt it was important that we did some trials, some pilot studies to see whether we could bring back a tortoise. So on this small island nature reserve of Ila Zagret, we introduced some Aldabra tortoises to see what their impact would be on native vegetation. And we soon found that Aldabra tortoises were very effective at dispersing native plants. They ate the fruits of the endemic ebony that was found on Ila Zagret. And soon we saw seedling ebonies growing from the droppings of the tortoises. The tortoises were eating the fruit, digesting the fruit, and the seeds would pass through and would subsequently germinate. And this was the first time we were seeing regeneration of ebonies on Ila Zagret. So here we had good empirical evidence that tortoises could, in part, fulfill the role of the extinct forms that were once existing on the islands around Mauritius. With this knowledge, we decided to put tortoises back on Round Island. So we took across to the island Aldabra tortoises, which we've released on the island, and they've been intensively monitored. They've now been on the island for more than a decade. They've started to breed on the island and we now have over 600 tortoises. And we've seen that they are beginning to control exotic grasses and they are beginning to restore the grazing climax community. They're spreading the seeds of screw pines and palms. And we are seeing the re-emergence of the once lost grazing climax community 
that they so shaped. This is a wonderful example how when species disappear, it is possible to bring back related forms or ecologically similar forms that can fulfill the roles of these extinct ones. And in the future, we hope to bring back a browsing tortoise and there is a form that still exists in Galapagos, so we may be able to bring that back. And there are Aldabra flightless rails that we can bring back to fulfill the role of the extinct flightless rail from Mauritius. We also had wonderful seabird communities throughout Mauritius and the other Mascarene Islands, and there was a Mascarene booby, now extinct. But there is a closely related form the Abbot's booby that exists on Christmas Island. So hopefully we can bring that back as a, an ecological replacement as well. So we can see we can restore species, but it takes decades. And I believe we can restore lost ecosystems, but it may take centuries. But there is great hope. And in the future, I believe we can actually start rebuilding vibrant pulsing systems. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.